Good evening. Are you awake? Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to our Christmas Eve service, our service with Holy Communion, the last service of Advent. The time between times as we journey into the dawn of Christmas Day together. We begin with a reading, and I'm going to read from Isaiah, from the prophet. A prophecy that was written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was born. From the second chapter of Isaiah. Actually from the ninth. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace from the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. So let's join in singing together our first carol for this evening. It's 153 in Rejoice and Sing. 153. Let us sing the good news of the angels to the world. On Christmas night, all Christians sing. Let's stand. be seated. So we come in prayer. Let us pray. Bright holy God, you come among us. You fill us with awe and wonder. You welcome our stories and our prayers this night. We pray tonight for peace. Peace in places where there is anger and war and fear. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers, for rulers and politicians, 
for fighters, for old people and children, for all who are caught up in conflict, in bitterness, and in danger. We pray for peace, with integrity and with justice. We pray on this night for travelers, those who are traveling home for Christmas, those who are traveling because they have no place, no shelter they can call their own, for those whose home is on the road. And we pray for children who will be born tonight, for their families, and we ask your blessing on their lives. We pray for all who are sick, for those who care for them and pray for them. This Christmas we pray for those who have died, for those we miss at our tables. Tell them how much we love them and miss them. Tell them we carry their stories in our lives. And this night, as our waiting ends, we pray for ourselves, for our needs and for our worries, for our hopes and dreams. Emmanuel, God with us, heaven come down to earth. Help us tonight to listen to the angels and not be afraid of you, of your weakness or your glory. Come, holy, helpless Jesus. Come, come into our lives with joy this night. Amen. We listen now to our first Bible reading for this evening, and we turn to the Gospel of Matthew and the birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her public, to her public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, and in a dream said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from this sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with him until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Thank you, Emma. We join in singing again from Rejoice and Sing 144, 144. It's not quite midnight yet, but we'll sing together. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old.
Please take a seat. Over the centuries, the Christmas tree has become part of our celebrations, an integral part of our celebrations. You may have noticed that we have a few Christmas trees extra this year. Of course, St. Andrew's has been holding its Christmas tree festival over this past uh, week. And we have 23 additional trees this year, all uh, sponsored and decorated by various groups that are part of St. Andrew's, um, who are associated with St. Andrew's or use our building, or local businesses. And it's been great to see so many visitors coming and looking at our trees this week. Uh, they will be here until the end of Christmas, so do have uh, a good look at them if you haven't already. But of course, that's kind of prompted much of our Advent worship to be grown around the Christmas tree itself. We've also been telling the story of the Jesse tree each week through Advent as we've added uh, different symbols to our humble branch, a branch from the stem of the tree of Jesse, the root of Jesse, the father of King David himself. And the Jesse tree reminds us of the ancestry, the family tree of Jesus himself. But the tree, the tree, the evergreen tree itself, of course, is a symbol of eternal life. As so many trees do, as they're covered in decorations, in lights, they remind us, they point to Jesus. As people sing songs of angels and shepherds, of wise men, and the light of a star throughout Christmas. Now, you might be one of those people who, like me, worries about the environmental impact of cutting down all these trees trees every year to stick in our churches and homes. Well, I don't know how much you know about uh, growing Christmas trees, and apologies if there are any tree experts among us, but I was reading an article in a magazine this last week about a family living uh, down in Dartmoor whose mission it is to grow Christmas trees that are kind to the environment. Three generations of the Petridis family grow their trees without pesticides or weed killers. Actually, if you want something a little closer to home, try Swillington Organic Farm in Leeds, because they also uh, grow uh, organic and environmentally friendly trees. But the Petridis family uh, take careful care of the young, wild-grown trees. Their aim is to have as little intervention in them as these trees are growing as possible, to enable them to fend for themselves. And by the time these naturally grown trees are about three or four foot high, shorter than all the trees we've got here, they are able to fend for themselves. And given a chance to develop their own defenses, these trees seem to protect themselves against all sorts of infections, invasive insects and fungi. But the other key to a happy, healthy tree is minimal pruning, pruning uh, whilst it's growing. If, by any chance at home, you have an ultra-bushy, bulbous Christmas tree this year, then chances are it was pruned every year since it was about four foot tall. The Petridis family and the way they grow their trees take a hands-off approach. Rather than aiming for the perfect looking tree, they have a philosophy to enjoy what nature provides, a naturally shaped tree. They would say with all its bumps and lumps and funny shapes. And that's a philosophy I really like. Because I believe that's how God grows us. With all our lumps, our bumps, and funny shapes. On the outside and the inside. Just as Susie Petridis believes that people like a bit of character in their tree, 
that their uniqueness is part of their charm. So I believe that's how God wants us to be. And so God sent us Jesus at Christmas to show us how to grow naturally and to our full potential. Throughout these past 20 centuries, thousands of millions of people have tried to embrace that same philosophy, to find Jesus and to grow as God intended. And that included a group of academics who looked for signs in the stars. I ought to have mentioned that the title of the article about those trees was actually called We Tree Kings. And let's hear about them now, or at least three uh, gifts given by a group of magi or studiers of the stars. Sheila's going to read to us from the Gospel of Matthew again. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at, his, at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I also may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God. The story of the Magi speaks of gifts. Every year at St Andrews, our Christmas appeal aims to donate and to raise money for four charities. Four charities which we choose to follow each year. Three of them we have followed for many years. COST, which is the Kenyan Orphanage Trust, uh, which provides a caring home and financial support for orphans and vulnerable children in Kenya. The United Reformed Church's own commitment for life and appeal for overseas charities with our focus on Israel and Palestine. And the Sylvia Wright Trust, which supports a school for the deaf and training schools for nurses and a therapy center for disabled children in South India. Our fourth charity for this year is Simon on the Street, uh, which is a charity providing emotional and practical support for people who are homeless in Leeds, in Bradford, and Kirklees. Through our community's generous giving, through your generous giving this year, we can pass on a gift to others. A gift that is more valuable than anything we will find under our trees. Gifts that we can give across the world, not just to Leeds, but to Kenya, South India, Israel, and Palestine. Our financial giving this year 
will make a difference to real people's real lives. If you would like to give, then please do pick up a leaflet on your way out which tells you more about how to donate. Uh, you can donate online or through text or, of course, by the old-fashioned method. Before we come to share in communion, we're going to sing together again, and it's 169 in the hymn books, 169. We're going to leave out verse 3, but let's stand and sing as we draw closer to share in communion. Unto us a boy is born. be seated. Reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And that word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace. And truth. So we come to share in Holy Communion this night. As we come to the sharing of the elements, the elements will be brought out to you. Please hold on to what you receive that we may share as one. So we come around this table, a table to which all invited, because this is not our table. This is our Lord's table, and it is him who invites us to meet here and share his meal. So let us pray. This night we give you thanks, O Father. For the joy and wonder of Christmas time. Thank you for all the experiences we have of love being shown towards us. For all the opportunities we have to show love to all our neighbors. Thanks be to God for a world filled with love. Thank you for families and friends, for parties and presents, for favorite carols for special meals. Thank you for all the things that each of us has to be grateful for.
And we thank you, God, this night, both for the ordinariness and the specialness of this annual season. Thank you, Father, for what happened in a faraway land many years ago. Thank you for sending your only Son into the world to be a man born of a woman. Thank you for what he said and did when he grew up, and for those who responded to his deeds and words, those who have passed the story down to us. Thanks be to God for a gospel filled with hope. We give thanks, God, above all else, for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We give thanks that when the light of the world came among men and women, he both fulfilled and confounded their expectations. They were looking for a king, and as a king you came, but the king of love, and wearing the likeness of a slave. Therefore we praise you, Father, because in him you have proved your love towards us. In him you have reconciled the world to yourself, and in him you have confirmed and fulfilled all your promises. So we praise you for the covenant sealed by his blood, for the forgiveness of sins and the gift of new life. And so we set before you this bread and this cup as a thank offering of your people, May it be the means by which we remember his holy sacrifice and share his body and blood. Send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. May your kingdom come and your will be done in and through us all. Amen. And so, in the sharing of this meal, we remember Christ. We remember how sat at a table with his friends, how he took bread, broke it, said a prayer, and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this and remember me. At that same meal, he took a cup, a cup commonly used for thanksgiving, and blessing it, he passed it to his friends and said, this cup seals a new and living promise, a covenant between you and my Father. Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of all that you have done wrong. Drink this and remember me. And so this holy night, we keep his feast and share in bread and wine.
body of Christ broken for us and for all the world. Amen. blood of Christ shed for us and for all the world. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, in the beginning, when all was very dark, you said, let there be light. And there was light and life throughout the universe. And when the human race was exhausted, tired, and weary, in the darkness of anxiety, confusion, and sin, into that darkness you came as light in Jesus Christ. God became a human being among us all. Once again, it is dark. Not just dark at midnight, but dark in ourselves. Dark with doubt. Dark with fear and uncertainty. Dark with confusing and conflicting voices in our ears. Come. Light of life. Lighten the darkness in our lives with your mighty word of love. Lighten our hearts with joy. Lighten our world with the hope that faith in you still brings. As we will go out into Christmas Day 
in the peace of Jesus Christ. May his peace that lightens the soul with faith, lifts the spirit with hope, and leavens the world with love be ours tonight and always. Amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So let us speak of the peace that the Christ child brings into the world. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And if you feel led, I invite you to share a sign or a word of peace with those nearest to you. The last candle is lit. The meal is shared. May Christ be our light in the world today. May we be born again with the Christ child. And may the peace of the Son of Peace be with us all. As we go out into Christmas Day, I invite you to share that peace with all you meet along the way. Be like those shepherds in the gospel story. Carry the peace and the light of Christ wherever you go. Don't forget we do join together on Christmas morning at 9.30. Just to confuse you, it's a Sunday tomorrow, and we're not here at 10.30, it's 9.30. Thank you all for coming together this evening. We go out singing our last hymn for this evening. It's 158, 158. We're going to leave out verses 2, 3, and 4. We'll leave out verses 2, 3, and 4. But it's a song to wake us up as we go out into the early hours of the morning. Christians awake, salute the happy morn. <laughs>
Tonight we are excited, so God bless us with wonder. Tonight we are expectant, so God bless us with gladness. Tonight we are on tiptoe at the cradle. Bless us with new birth, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Spirit be with each and every one of us this night, this morning, and always. Amen. <laughs>